Okay, before we start this video, just a quick question. Uh, when you think of tech giants, who generally comes to your mind? Is it Google, Apple, Amazon, or maybe Elon Musk's Twitter? Well, what if I told you there's a tech giant out there that has its fingers in almost every pie? And no, I'm not talking about the one with the bitten apple logo. The name is Tencent, a company with a portfolio so big, it could probably buy half of Silicon Valley and still have spare change for a cup of chai. But here's the kicker. Despite being one of the most influential companies in the world, Tencent generally flies under the radar. Now let's rewind the clock to 1998, which is the year Tencent was born. At that time, the internet was barely a thing in China. And here come Ma Huateng, also known as Pony Ma, and Zhang Zidong, two ex-classmates with big dreams and no money. They wanted to bring real-time messaging to China. So inspired by ICQ, a popular Israeli messaging app, they created OICQ. The O was their little open twist. But let's be real, it probably stood for only slightly different from ICQ. And despite facing bankruptcy and a hundred other hurdles, these guys managed to capture Chinese hearts. This little app, which was simple, free and easy to use, struck a chord with Chinese users. And boom, within months, they had a loyal fan base. That's how Tencent was born. From here, they launched QQ, China's most popular messaging service. But hang on, all wasn't sunshine and roses just yet. Here's where the plot thickens. Our friends at Tencent almost went bankrupt. They had a popular app, but zero revenue. Think of it like a restaurant with a line outside the door, but no one paying the bill. So what did they do? They got creative with a model that would become a classic, the freemium model. Essentially, QQ was free, but users could pay for status upgrades, customized avatars, and cool virtual items. And this is how cash started rolling in. With a steady revenue stream, Tencent diversified, branching into music streaming, gaming, and even e-commerce. They were setting the stage to build a tech empire. Now Tencent's move into gaming was nothing short of epic. Initially, they dabbled in online gaming, but soon enough, they saw gaming as a golden goose. They launched their own gaming platform in 2004, and the rest is history. But they didn't stop there. Tencent wanted to dominate the gaming world, so they went on an acquisition spree. In 2001, they bought Riot Games, the brains behind League of Legends. Yep, Tencent owns the game that millions of people are addicted to worldwide. And guess what? This wasn't a one-off thing. Tencent picked up stakes in Epic Games, so if you play Fortnite, you're in Tencent's world. They also have stakes in Supercell, the creators of Clash of Clans, and even Activision Blizzard, makers of Call of Duty. Today, Tencent isn't just the biggest gaming company in China, it's the biggest in the world by revenue. Imagine billions of gamers across devices, all playing games with a dash of Tencent. And if you thought Tencent's ambitions were limited to just gaming, think again. Tencent isn't satisfied with just being a Chinese giant. It wants to be a global tech force. Over the past decade, Tencent's been investing in some big names worldwide. Tesla, Spotify, Snapchat, you name it. But here's where it gets clever. Rather than trying to take over, they opt for minority stakes, which means they get a seat at the table without being the main decision maker. It's like being at a party but not being responsible for the mess. This strategy allows Tencent to navigate local markets while learning from top companies in various industries. It's a kind of a soft power that lets them expand their influence globally, all while avoiding the red tape and resistance that full acquisitions often bring. They're like the friend who knows everyone but doesn't dominate the conversation. Let's have a quick look at the list of some of the games and companies Tencent has ownership in. You can pause this video if you want to see all of them. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Tencent's strategy is to spread its gaming influence without demanding total control. So whether you're a casual gamer or a hardcore one, there's a solid chance you're playing something that Tencent's got a stake in. Now if there's one app that captures Tencent's vision, it's WeChat. The app isn't just a messaging platform, it's a one-stop shop for everything. You want to message friends, book a cab, pay for dinner, manage your investments, or even make a doctor's appointment, 
you can do all of that in WeChat. In fact, WeChat is so crucial in China that it's almost hard to function without it. Over a billion people use it every month. And Tencent's ecosystem doesn't stop with WeChat. They're also a big player in cloud computing. Competing with giants like Amazon Web Services and Alibaba Cloud, Tencent is steadily carving out its own space in the digital infrastructure world. So from entertainment to practical services, Tencent is making sure its ecosystem has everything a person might need online. It's like a digital Swiss army knife ready for any scenario. And here's where things get sci-fi. We're talking about Tencent's investments in AI, fintech and healthcare. Tencent has been pouring money into developing tools like facial recognition, autonomous driving, natural language processing. Ever heard of Tencent AI Labs? Their research focuses on creating AI for social good, like detecting diseases through image analysis. Tencent is not only shaping the entertainment and communications landscape, but also aiming to impact our lives in deeply personal ways. Imagine a future where your car, your finances, and even your health are powered by Tencent technology. That's both amazing and, let's be honest, a little intimidating after all. With all these strategic moves, it's no surprise that Tencent's valuation once peaked over $900 billion, putting it in the same league as the most valuable companies in the world. Now Tencent has been facing regulatory challenges, particularly in China. But here's the thing, Tencent knows how to adapt. From almost going bankrupt to becoming a global tech powerhouse, Tencent's story is one of resilience and adaptability. Currently, Tencent is valued at an astounding 42.610 trillion rupees, making it the world's 18th most valuable company by market capital. That valuation reflects not only Tencent's prowess in tech, but also its influence across gaming, social media, and cloud computing. Despite recent regulatory challenges in China, Tencent continues to adapt and expand globally. Speaking of expansions, Tencent's smash hit Honor of Kings, previously exclusive to China, went global in 2024. With millions of players worldwide, it's quickly becoming one of the most played mobile games globally. But here's the twist for our Indian audiences. You may remember that Tencent's apps were banned in India in 2020 due to national security concerns. So how did they return? In a strategic move, Tencent re-entered the Indian market through its global game publishing arm, Level Infinite, based in Singapore and Amsterdam. Three years after being forced to withdraw, Tencent is making a comeback, albeit cautiously, to reconnect with Indian gaming audiences. Looking ahead, Tencent is eyeing the next big things. The metaverse, advanced AI, virtual reality, you name it, Tencent's probably got it on its radar. They're on a mission to not just be part of the future of technology, but to lead it. So when you ask how big is Tencent, you're really asking how big can the future of technology be? All right, that's a wrap on the Tencent story. Tencent isn't just big, it's a force shaping our digital lives in ways we don't always see. If you've enjoyed this journey into the world of Tencent, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to stay updated with more tech stories from Exhibit Magazine. Until next time, stay curious, stay techy, and keep exploring. Cheers.